Hello again and welcome. Today I'd like to continue my discussion on the new Bryman BM780 Bluetooth series meters. On my right, this is the new Bryman BM788BT. On the left, we have a Bryman BM786. Both of these meters were supplied by Bryman. So again, I want to be clear, you cannot purchase this meter as of today, but I understand it's fairly close. Now Dave Jones on EV blog was also offered a Bryman BM787. It'll be a custom meter, I guess, for him. It's very similar to the BM786. Now he ran into a problem during his testing where he was measuring a 1K resistor similar to what I was doing when I was testing my meter. And what would happen is the phone was recording a value of 10 times higher than what the value of the actual resistor was. It's a very bizarre problem. I'll give you the link if you want to have a look at the data that he's posted. So I've been trying to reproduce that failure and so far I've been unsuccessful. Of course, he's testing with a Android telephone. Now, I mentioned in the last video that I went out and purchased a new cell phone. Again, this is my first cell phone that I've ever owned. Uh, this one's made by Blue. It's a model G64. I've gone ahead and installed their Android application with this, and that is the same version that Dave's been testing with. And even with the cell phone, I was unable to reproduce the problem. So one of the variables, of course, is that he's testing with a different meter than what I was, and they have different firmware available. So I tried to reprogram the firmware from the Bryman BM787 into the Bryman BM788BT. Now again, Bryman had supplied me with that firmware for my own testing. So if you watch this channel, you know I have an arrangement with them where they've been supplying me prototype parts for a while. So I want to be clear that this isn't something that Bryman would supply to a casual user. And the whole idea with that is to help them try to solve some of these initial problems before the product gets released. With that new firmware installed in this meter, I was still unable to replicate the problem. So the next thing I wanted to do was try to eliminate the variable of having a different meter. Now, of course, they don't have the BM787 available. So what had happened is Bryman supplied me with a second radio board and they supplied me with the other components to modify the main circuit board and of course instructions were included as well so what I did is I modified this BM786 into the BM787BT and so I've gone ahead and made those changes to this meter if I go ahead and power this up you can see these are both the Bluetooth firmware on the left you can see it's the 87 and it's version 12 and on the right of course it's the 88 and it's version 14 so both meters have the latest firmware, and again, this is the firmware that Dave's been testing with. Also, if we turn on the Bluetooth, I don't know if that'll show up on the camera, right here you can see the icon where the Bluetooth is enabled. And the same thing for the meter on the right. You can see they both identify to be the same device. They do have a different Mac. So after updating this meter, I went to test it out and the first thing I noticed is with the leads not installed in the meter when I switched this over to resistance mode the meter read I think 240 ohms and then if you would select the diode check mode it was reading roughly 0.7 volts and that was again with the leads opened I also tried to measure a 5 volt source with this and I think the meter was reading 0.14 volts or so I actually thought maybe I had damaged this multimeter you may remember that I have two of these that Bryman supplied. One of them was used for a lot of the destructive testing, and that was marked with a silver dot in the upper left corner. Now this meter was never subjected to any testing, is what I thought, and it also has all the latest hardware changes that match the current production meter. So I thought, man, did I actually go out and blow this meter up at some point? So I reprogrammed the original firmware that was with this meter, Long and behold, the meter started working correctly. And again, they had told me that it could cause a problem with the calibration. They had told me that before with other firmware changes that we've made. But it's never caused this major of a difference. I thought, okay, we're going to just go ahead and try to realign this meter. Because again, I want to use this to try to replicate that problem that Dave was seeing with his meter. When I first received these meters, Bryman had supplied me with a kind of a cheat sheet on how to go through and realign them. It was not an extensive document, and so I attempted to do the realignment, and I ran into a problem right away. 
basically what ends up happening is I make the meter worse than what it was originally so what I thought is I'm just going to take the coefficients out of the BM788 and I'm going to install those into this meter. So I had another meter that they had sent me a long time ago and this is one of the real early prototypes. I took that meter apart and I had a look at all the circuit boards to try to see if I could figure out where the calibration coefficients are stored. So this is the circuit board that resides just below all the buttons you can see. Here's the switch contacts right here, but you'll notice on the back side of this circuit board there are two 8-pin SOICs. You can see on this board, maybe if it shows up well enough in the camera, this board was actually hand soldered by Bryman. So, very old circuit board. Now, what I did is I unsoldered these ICs, and I have one of these really low-cost programmers here. Again, I used to have a decent programmer. It got taken out with a lightning strike here at the house. And this is what I bought to replace it. Well, I've got these little jump cables here. This allows me essentially to plug into this zip socket of the programmer. Like so. And then I can use these little clips and I clip the SOICs into that and then I could use this to read out the contents. So I did that for both memory devices. The one on the right which is designated as U6 has a marking of LO2 so I believe that's a 24CO2A or some derivative of that. Now when I read the contents of this memory that looked like maybe they had only stored, I don't know, less than 20 bytes of data on that part. So it didn't look like anything having to do with the coefficients. But when I check the E squared on the left, this is designated U5. And this is a part number 24CS04. Now when I read that part out, it was basically loaded. So I was pretty sure that that was the coefficients. So what I did is I took this circuit board and I just plugged this into the BM786 and I got very similar results with what I had with this meter before I tried to realign it. The next step then is I took the circuit board out of the BM788 and again I just took out the one E squared part U5. I read that with our programmer then I went ahead and programmed the contents of that EEPROM into this meter. Now of course I knew that that was going to cause problems with this meter so this has a separate RMS to DC converter, which this meter does not have. So I knew anything that required the AC voltage measurement wouldn't work. But I expected basically the rest of it to kind of sort of work. And I went ahead and I measured the DC voltages. And this meter was out a little bit. I think at 1,000 volts, this meter measured maybe 7, 8 volts high. It was definitely out of spec. In the resistance mode, when you would select ohms, it would read a little off, but it was basically functional. Same thing with the capacitance and the temperature. All those sort of kind of worked, but again, you're using the coefficients that were used to align this meter. I mean, it's a completely different meter. I was surprised it came in as close as it did. That, to me, is a testament as far as how tight their process is controlled and how tight their design is as far as performance. So, again, the goal of this was to replicate this problem that Dave Jones was seeing with his meter. So the first thing I wanted to do was try to get the resistance measurement a little closer. Now I don't have a flute calibrator here. So what I did is I took some film resistors and I sorted these to try to get values that were very close to what the meter requires to do the alignment. To do that I was using my HP 34401A you can see 300 ohms, we're measuring 300.028. This is our 3K and 30K, 300K, 3 meg, 30 meg, and 40 meg or 25 nano siemens. Now, this 3 meg was a little high 
and so I didn't really like it. I went ahead and I sorted out another resistor for this that got it a little low and then I seriesed up two additional resistors and that brought us into this uh, 3 meg here. So after getting this set up I went ahead and went through and I realigned the resistance mode of the meter and it now measures fairly close so let's just go ahead and we'll attach some leads and let's just run through with our little test box and we'll check some of the other modes so again here's a dead short and you can see the meter reads zero so here we are with a one ohm resistor and you can see it measures 1.02 here we are with our 100 ohm resistor and it's measuring 100.0201 this is our 1 meg again this is a 1% part this is our 40 meg again this is a 2% part and fairly close again if we go to measure conductance should measure 25 and you can see it's fairly close so here is our diode check mode again before the alignment uh, this was reading 0.7 volts um, so with a short should read zero so here is a single silicon diode and here's two in series of course this is our white LED here's a 0.1 microfarad fairly close this is a 1 nanofarad fairly close here we have our 100 microfarad capacitor this should be roughly 500 degrees Celsius again this would be roughly room temp and 1040 or so degrees so close enough now again because this does not have the RMS to DC converter that this meter has if you would feed AC into the meter it basically read zero volts so let's just go ahead and we'll select AC volts so with our box here this should be roughly two and a half volts and you can see it reads roughly uh, 2.486 or so and if we go to frequency this should read roughly 60 Hertz which it does this would be 120 Hertz which is close and here's 15 Hertz you can see that's fine so again these are DC coupled so if we just go back to the AC volt mode again this should read roughly two and a half volts as well so you can see the meter is now basically working okay to align the AC volt mode on this I used my original Brahman BM869S as a reference now again normally I'd be using my Agilent meter for that now again I want to be clear that my goal with trying to realign this meter was not so I could achieve some super good performance with the meter it's really just to get the meter functional so I can try to replicate this problem that Dave's having. One of the things I'd mentioned though is that I did not realign the DC voltage and this meter read a little hot. So I did go back and I did realign the meter using this applied kilovolts power supply. And I used my HP 34401A as a reference. We'll go ahead and take them up to about a thousand volts. And you can see 1084.8. 1084.6, 1084.5. Now again, the BM869S offers a 500,000 count mode. We can go ahead and enable that. But there you can see they're not drifting around at all, and they basically match. So one of the things that has also happened is because I'm having a problem with this particular cell phone connecting to the meters, Bryman has purchased this exact same telephone to try to replicate the problems that I'm seeing. So I'm hoping that I'm going to see an update to their Android application pretty soon. Now my wife does have an Apple iPhone. I went ahead and installed their application on that phone. And that phone had no problems linking to either meter or collecting data. So whatever the issue is, it's unique to this Android. Now I know Dave is running an Android as well. He's using Android 15, I think is what he said. This is using Android 14. 
and I'm not sure if that's part of the problem. So after making all the modifications, realigning the meter, getting it fairly close, I went ahead and I tried to once again to replicate what Dave was seeing, and I was completely unsuccessful. So Bryman has also been running their own internal test trying to replicate it as well. Uh, they haven't had any luck there. One of the things they thought is the original application that Dave and I were testing with, they had not enabled CRC checking in their application. Now, knowing how Bluetooth works, it has its own embedded CRC. I don't really know what adding that additional CRC layer does for them. They provided Dave with that application and me as well. And I believe that since then, Dave has not been able to get that new application to reproduce the problem. The biggest problem he's got is I think he's gone back to the older application and it's been hit and miss if he's been able to reproduce that problem as well. Whatever is going on here, this is not going to be a trivial problem to try to replicate and solve. Again, it's been about a month, so I just wanted to give you a little update to where things were today. Again, I'd like to thank Bryman for giving me the opportunity to have a look at some of these pre-production meters. For me, working in engineering, it's always interesting to see what other companies are doing. Well, that's all for now. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to mention. My YouTube account now has over 25,000 followers. This is very much a niche channel, so I'm surprised to see that many of you hanging out here. So new followers, welcome aboard. Hopefully you enjoy the channel, and we'll see you in the next video. Later.